Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to another episode of Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport roundup podcast. This is episode 34, so we're getting on for almost a year now, Tiff, uh, which is exciting. And it's been, well, I would like to say it's an exciting weekend of motorsport. It is certainly because we crowned three different champions. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to kick off first with what was an absolute <laughs> snore fest of a Formula yeah. One. I don't know what you thought about it, but we I was can't. almost falling asleep. I have to be honest. I nearly turned over we to can't. Antiques Roadshow <laughs> to, 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 to stay awake. It was uh, that boring. But what else don't do you want to start making? Don't start making sleepy Mexican jokes because Clark, <laughs> Clarks and his mob did that for one show. They got into real trouble. But it was a sleepy snooze fest in Mexico. Uh, it's such a shame, you know, building it all up. And when, when you know, when Mercedes flip-flopped in qualifying, so the, the Red Bulls had been quicker, we all thought it would be that way. And we thought, oh, gosh, yeah, you know, the, the Red Bulls have made a mistake blaming poor little Tsunoda. He was just pulling off the road to get out of the way. He did the he right never... thing. He did the right thing. Yeah. And Perry, Perry is saying, I got so close, I lost some downforce. Bollocks, did he? He was miles <laughs> behind. He just panicked a bit because he saw, I mean, the trouble with some of those tracks when they have so much runoff is that when you go 150 miles an hour through corners, actually seeing where the track goes might be a bit tricky. But no, he just sort of had a bit of a panic and um, poor Sonoda. And then, you know, he was, he was made to drag Gasly around and, and then he got clobbered by um, Ocon, I think, was it, in that pincer. And so poor old Sonoda. Look, I'm a massive Max fan. I love his, I love his ability and his talent, but I don't like I the way that he is. He's so, he's got to understand he's not the only driver out there. Sonoda did nothing wrong whatsoever. In fact, he did everything. Nah, well, 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 Max, yeah, Max only came upon it last, so he was sort of, you know, he let Perez off the hook, and um, <laughs> he didn't really know. But yeah, he did. What do you say? What's that idiot doing? I mean, you can't say that about, you know, a, a fellow Red Bull sponsored driver and talk about being idiots, but. Uh, there is still the arrogant youth in there, but I mean, he drove brilliantly. And I think now we have to accept that. Uh, I mean, I think he's won nine Grand Prix. I mean, he, he is, he deserves to be the champion this year. To be there honest. is only one um, champion this year. We've been, we've been saying maybe it's going to go to Lewis, maybe, but there's only one. There's one champion. Slipping and, away. And, and the Grand Prix that he hasn't won, he, and I mean, yeah, I'm a big Lewis fan, uh, but the Grand Prix yeah. Max hasn't won. He's had some bad luck. You know, look at Silverstone, yeah. look at the, look at the times that he's, He's had a lot yeah. more bad luck in terms of uh, not finishing than... Uh, the Tires blowing up. Where, where was that? In, yeah. um, in Sochi. Yeah. Um, so he drove brilliantly, you know. There was a bit of... The only excitement was Perez catching and the Mexican crowd going wild. But then he got within this dreaded, you know, one and a half seconds. And it's quite funny that the, the blue flags... I mean, poor old... Um, Lewis was held up behind uh, Norris for lap after lap and he didn't actually go on the run. But... Verstappen would on the phone, wouldn't he moan and get this idiot out of my way? But, you know, Lewis knew the rule is, I think it's 1.3 seconds you have to get within before they'll wave the blue flags. Um, so, but it, I thought it was a bit like what was reversed when uh, when Lewis was catching Max. Where was that? And I thought he would get yeah, him. But once he got... A few weeks In America. Ago, yeah, America, in yeah. America. It was a bit like that with Perez. You know, I thought he's going to get him. But then once you get in within that one, this dreaded... Following in the era, which hopefully is going to be fixed next year. We wait to see. We want overtaking. But, um, we want, I mean, uh, other than mm. the first first corner, let's go back to the start of the race. So, so qualifying was quite eventful because uh, Bottas put in a, a, a fantastic lap, out qualified Lewis, which is, you know, a rare yeah. thing these days. Um, and But it was, a, so it was a first ever lockout for Mercedes uh, AMG of, of the year, which is just incredible. And it shows the dominance of Red Bull. Um, but the first corner, for those of you that didn't see it, was well, for those of you who did see it, it was well, what were they doing? Because Bottas looked like he was so hell bent on either letting Lewis through or. or, or oh, no, I Lewis. know. Well, Lewis That's is what... actually criticizing Lewis today and said, you know, I'm not sure why Vartz from Altry wasn't blocking. I was blocking the inside. It was a very wide track. I mean, you could actually fit about four cars, five cars wide almost if they were rubbing wheels. But I think the main thing is, I mean, the outside line is where you're going to break latest. So I think Valtteri should have at least got to the outside and maybe made Max come through the middle the or something. Line? But you lot, what yeah, he just is the gave... racing line. <laughs> and of course, Max Max doesn't uh, back out of opportunities. Oh, he's brilliant. And, least... the, and the faith he has in his brakes, Lewis um, yeah. Valtteri. I don't think he, and Lewis is straight on the radio saying, "Oh, we've got to sort the brakes out, man." 
But you know, the, <laughs> the, the confidence that Max has, just phenomenal on the brakes. But Lewis still drove a brilliant race, as, as he does. I mean, he, he rung every tenth of a second out of that Mercedes. You know, well, Valtteri had a terrible time again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was a bit apart from Perez catching, it was a snooze fest. McLaren's, you know, up they go up and down the grid. You know, there's Lando battling for ninth, getting lapped. They were all lapped down to six, well, six place science was lapped. So only, only the top five weren't the only two non contestors that weren't lapped were Gasly and Leclerc. Yeah, and the quite, pace of the Red Bull incredible. and Mercedes is but still. And, and that way. swung it back into Ferrari's favour in terms of them because the manufacturers' championship. Red Bull uh, are on for it uh, for the Constructors' Championship. Yeah, yeah, then you've got yeah. uh, McLaren going into Mexico with three points ahead of Ferrari, but now Ferrari have leapfrogged them as well. No particularly fast uh, pit stops, 2.17 from no, Williams. No, nothing from Porter. Uh, no, nothing no, very okay. exciting there. And it wasn't, they, yeah, we're, later in the programme, wait for later, we will be discussing the excitement of pit stops later <laughs> on in the show. <laughs> but not, uh, not the 2.1 or 2.2. Oh, it's a tenth of a second quicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, you know, look at look at Valtteri had his uh, yeah move on field. yeah no. Yeah, so. but, but yeah, yeah, when they make a complete botch up, it makes a big difference. Let's talk about this first corner incident because Ricardo, who everyone's a fan of, uh, he seems. I oh, know. But but what I don't understand is a, uh, when was it? I think it was Turkey in the rain. Gasly, he got a five second penalty for going into somebody on a very similar sort of on a wet track, very similar yeah, sort no. of circumstances. But, but Ricardo got Ricardo nothing, got did nothing. he? No, he know. got nothing. He took out the, the pole position man. <laughs> and yeah. caused chaos behind. Which, yeah, he obviously didn't mean to do, but he did I've forgotten about that. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I've, I've completely forgotten about penalties. Yeah, he should have had Why wasn't the penalty applied? Because everyone loves Daniel Ricardo. Well, Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it was that classic reason. case, wasn't it? When he, he was so busy overtaking... Probably Gasly, I forget who it was on his left. Is that you? Know, you get obsessed with making sure you overtake the one next to you, and then oh, you look up in front of you, and you go, oh, bloody hell, I'm in trouble now. So yeah, once he locked up, yeah. And highlights of the Mexican Grand Prix, I think, were the Mexicans, the crowd, because they are, are yeah, they the most raucous around there. Brilliant. Okay. I know. It helps to have the sun on your back. I wish we had that every every year at Silverstone, <laughs> but um, they were they were uh, that, that they little, love that little amphitheater that uh, worked yeah. so well. It's, I think it was an old this. baseball stadium because that's why it's sort of that shape with like huge grandstands around it. But uh, yeah, it's very the Mexicans unusual. do if, love it. If you haven't seen it, it's very unusual. They got one segment of the of the state of the uh, the track where the the stands are facing the cars that are coming forward, but then you can't see them going past. It's really quite unusual, but it's the really? really love, yeah, it's a lovely um, setup. Really good. Setup. Great track. I raced there. My, my World Sports Car Championship. My last round finished fourth there with the Porsches. So yeah, with Derek Bell, so I've been. It was a bumpy track then. It's a lot smoother now. So Derek Bell turned 80 last week. So you were 70, he was 80, and yeah. somebody else was 60. Bernie Eccleston, too. Bernie Eccleston so the trio, yeah. 91. So he spoils he okay. the symmetry slightly by being 91. <laughs> the day before I was 70 and two days before Derek was eight. So, yeah. so I follow those two, because as long as they're going, I think, well, they're going, I'll keep going. <laughs> Well, they're both going strong, aren't they? Very strong. And you're going, I still can't believe all the lovely birthday wishes. If you haven't seen it, which I'm sure most of you that are listening to this or watching this have probably seen already, but the lovely little tribute. Uh, to Thank you very much. For but the comments, comments are brilliant. Blushing, they're blushing. brilliant. They're, yeah, they're, and, and deservedly so as well, Tiff. So your takeaway from the Mexico Grand Prix? A uh, snooze fest. Um, and really, Max, Max really stamping his authority on the title, I think. Max you know. won it. Max has won it. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm talking about Derek Bell, and Derek Bell and my fourth place in, in Mexico, the World Sports Cars in 89. Of course, World Sports Cars finished last weekend. Uh, Mike Conway, by finishing second, with his mates, Toby Ashi and um, Lopez, got kept his World Sports Cars Championship crown. So Mike Conway, big up to you, a British world champion, which, of course, Derek did on several occasions. Uh, LMP2 went to the Belgian WR racing team, W racing team, uh, but Ant Davison finished second in his last professional race Amazing. in the LMP2 class. So well done, Ant. I'm sure we'll see it good, but I know you haven't fully retired because you're not that stupid. You'll be back racing something. <laughs> but it was a controversy. After seven hours and 49 minutes of is snooze this, fest, Is this the Porsche Ferrari? Could yeah. Cause it? Seven hours. <laughs> and four, I mean, there's nobody watching. It's only live stream on motorsport.com. Um, Somebody was watching. watching. 
Fred Chinnix was watching because he texted me. He said, what do you think about Porsche Ferrari? So then I had to, <laughs> I had to spot up on it. Carry on. Well, of course, well, we, we discussed the background of it last week, you know, because the FIA had, had just taken 25 horsepower out of the Ferrari <laughs> to lead the championship. And there's a, there's a computerised system that dictates when things change on based on results. But apparently the FIA are allowed to just throw a black ball in and, and just do whatever they want. Crazy. And they gave them, they gave them some power back, but obviously there's still grief. And yet, even, although, you know, they're complaining about balance of power, you have to admit that balance of power is quite close because after seven hours and 49 minutes, the uh, Ferrari was right behind the Porsche when the Porsche went wide to let a LMP2 car. And rather bizarrely, the uh, Ferrari driver just um, sort of braked into the back of the Porsche. I mean, it looked a blatant, you know, worse than Ricardo's thing. But um, then he then got a drive-through penalty but the Porsche, for some reason, pitied. And not a drive through. He had to let him pass. I think yeah. the, the penalty, you've got yeah, to change swap the position. Yeah. 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 Then the Porsche pitied. So then the Ferrari's out on its own. And then when the Ferrari pitied, he came out ahead of the Porsche. And by then he thought it, it doesn't matter anymore. But uh, So if if the results stand, James Calado is another British driver to win uh, a world title, not the outright world title, but the, LA, the GTE so it's, Pro. So as of um, just before midday on Monday, it's still under investigation. James Collado and oh, his right. Codro. It wasn't James that did the did the ramming, by the way. It was the Italian, Alessandro Piero Guidi, who clattered into Michael Christians in the Porsche. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it, season ends in bored, boredom because Toyota, Toyota, Toyota. But I think we have to look ahead to WN. We mustn't diss it because it is getting, you know, growing. I was just looking at the list, you know, of what's coming, because um, we've got the Toyotas and the Alpine and that, that grandfathered car. Peugeot are coming full-time next year. Then, you know, 2023, we've got Ferrari, Porsche, Audi, Acura slash Honda, BMW, Cadillacs, and then for the future, Lamborghini are talking That's about exciting, Bentley, McLaren. Isn't it? It's That's going, really it's good, going yeah. to be brilliant. Although in more controversy, though, WEC, because Glickenhaus is an American entrepreneur, you know, yeah, film producer. Yeah, yeah. He, he sort of wants to pick and choose the rate. He's, he's going against establishment, and I don't think he's going to win. There's a moment he said, well, I'll do the first three races yet next year, but I won't do the rest of them. Um, and they, they, WWC have pointed out in the regulations, you must enter for every race if you want to be in. And they also said in Glickenhaus, with this queue of manufacturers coming, there's going to be limited entries, and if you're not on board, um, you won't be guaranteed an entry in 2023. Um, and also, Glickenhaus has already quoted saying that, that because this balance of power, which is the other shadow over the LMH, the LM Dayton, and the American thing, um, Glickenhaus already said, well, the Le Mans organizers won't let an LM Daytona beat the LM hybrids. You know, he's almost saying, if they do, you know, I'm out. So he's, he's a little guy threatening to walk away from the championship the balance pad doesn't when, shoot hey, you. Hey, when we say little guy you mean what you're referring to in the, in the grander scheme of teams is a small yes. team it's a small yes. team he's not, he's not a manufacturer yeah. and that's the problem the americans won't let him race either because the americans say you, ha you have to be a manufacturer making a road car of at least i don't think it's two and a half thousand cars so to join in the american daytona prototypes you have to be a manufacturer that builds lots of road cars so Glickenhaus doesn't qualify there. Uh, I think, so, which is a shame. I think what he's doing is his passion. He's loving it, and he's challenging, challenging uh, pushing the boundaries. And 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 I hope we get to see him race and, and become a bit more successful because yeah, well, they've told him now he's got to have one entry, at least one entry for the whole of next season, or, or you're out. Okay. So which lots is... of fun, more fun off the track than there is on the track in, <laughs> in world sports cars at the moment. And of course, the GTE. I mean, when I say it with the Ferrari hit the Porsche, I mean, the only there were only four cars in GT Pro because that dwindled and dwindled. There was only the Ferrari and the Porsche entries, two from each. So it's been a bit of a quiet season in the world endurance sports cars. But you know, hopefully the crowds will be back. I mean, in '89 when I was doing Group C, you know, I mean, Brands Hatch we ended up 35, 40,000 people cramming the banks and yeah. Mexico in that last race. It was absolutely packed with people. So it, it is a great formula when you've got more variety and, and more entries. So let's hope WEC comes back. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 I don't want to jump around too much, but going back to, to the Formula One, one thing we didn't say was where they're heading over the next uh, few weeks, but they're off to Brazil, into Lagos. 
um, which is always a bit of a, a carnival fiesta. We normally do that at the end. What do we? So you see, you're jumping, you're jumping back yeah. now. I was getting too excited. And that's when we look forward to next weekend, is when we say that. But yeah. no, you're excited. Yeah, I'm excited. You know. well, but there's two new ones well, as well that I will mention right now. Yeah, well. Qatar and Saudi Arabia. <laughs> With the finale at Abu Dhabi, but um, yeah, well, we 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 saved ourselves a few moments in the end. And you're a little bit grumpy there, but I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you very happy. I'm going to talk about another Ooh. world champion, another world champion that you might know or you might like. Uh, number five. <gasps> Did he win anything? Is, are we, are we, am I getting close? Am I, are you getting a bit happier? <laughs> And Larson. <laughs> Kyle Larson. It was an epic. If you'd stayed up late, if you had access to watch NASCAR, like I've been telling you all to watch. I mean, it wasn't the greatest racing track. It was a bit of a single, except when they start, they're allowed to use the entire apron. They've got this massive, they were going five or six wide, sort of cutting the corner of the trioval at um, Phoenix, which they're allowed to do. You can go wherever you want there, but of course it's got no banking, so you're not quite as quick when it comes to the corner. But uh, it was a great race, lots of tactics going on, and only four people with the whole, the whole grids there, they're all racing, all 38 of them, anyone can win, but only the four that got uh, through the last uh, qualifying rounds um, can win the championship, which was Larson and uh, Elliot, his co-driver, the two, the two Chevrolets against the two Toyotas of Truex and um, the Eleven. How much do they help each other, Tiff? How much How much? Oh, not other at all. People... No, no, they're individual teams. They? They're completely de- 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 Hamlin, of course, Denny Hamlin. But in fact, the last one, I mean, it was, it was going away from him. You know, at the beginning, it was the two Chevrolets out the front all the time, but the Toyotas got quicker and quicker. And it's always great. And you have these long run cars and short run cars. They talk about it a hell of a lot, you know, because in the first five or six laps in fresh tyres, the Chevrolets were quick. But after 15 to 20 laps and 25 laps, the Toyotas were, were, were tracking them down. And with only about 50 laps to go, Larson was down in fourth and the two Toyotas were out front. It looked like, you know, it was going to be a Toyota win. Truex was on top, really. Um, but now it came to the crunch because there was luckily for, for Larson, there was a yellow flag. Someone's um, pace car came out because a brake rotor, disc, brake disc, American words now, uh, shatters with bits of disc in the middle of the tracks. So they had to have the, the safety car. They all come in now for fresh tires for the final 25 laps. And Larson's boys did it for them. <laughs> they did a pit. You're going to be amazed by this. I've had to write it down because I know you're going to be so excited by this. Because their crew, using just two guns, two guns, two gunmen, two tire carriers, and one man with a big trolley jack, service car Larson, in, you're going to be staggered by this. 11.8 seconds. It's amazing. Uh, yay? Yeah? yeah, no, he's very, I'm very. But, Impressed, but those 11.8 seconds, and this is why I love again another thing about NASCAR. People say, you know, it's on dinosaur stuff. In fact, next year's changing because they haven't got the five lug nuts, they're going to a center lock wheel, so they're going much that's quicker. That's doing five nuts. different nuts, just, yeah. Just, well, just, in fact, yeah, well, five each side, yeah. So, you rip, 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 wow. like it's just, and of course, you can see it happening, and that's yeah. why you know, a slightly so a pit stop, you see a bloke running around the car with his trolley jacks jacked. One side and they do one, you know. Whereas the Formula One pit stops, I know they're, they're made it scientific, and Formula One is the peak of science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, also the NASCAR boys, you have to stay over the wall till your car's one pit box ahead. You've got this drama all standing on the wall, the car's coming in, they leap over the wall. Yeah. But in Formula One, you've got 48 people sitting there, you know, by their marker, waiting for the tire to arrive in front of their face. And it's gone. It's done. Yeah. You, you can't see any skill by any of the 38 people doing clearly, the touch. Clearly, there is a massive skill, but I, I get what so you're anyway, saying there. What, so Larson go. came out in front. He leapt from fourth to first, thanks to this crew doing this record-breaking uh, pit stop. Um, and then at the restart, he had the Toyotas all over him and Truex was all over him. It got so tense, because you all assumed after 10 laps, about 25 left to go, the Toyota would get the better grip. But Kyle just drove brilliantly, majestically. <laughs> and, in, in, you know, if he hadn't have won, it would have been a, a kick in the teeth for their system, you know, of having... Because he, he, he already won the points championship with four rounds to go, or no, 12 rounds to go. Then they had this knockout phase. If he, if he hadn't have won the title this year, it would have been a travesty. But that's it, the way it is. 
Did he mention and, um, in his victory speech? Did he mention Love Cars on the Grid podcast or Tiff no, Nadell? No, my biggest no. fan, my biggest fan from the UK, Tiff Nadell. <laughs> but, but you know, he thanked his crew and he was in tears. He was burnt out. So he yeah, had his little son with him. He took his son in the car to the podium. And the family were there. And, and it was, I mean, he, he, he led the most, that was his 10th win this year. And he, he led the most, he led a record number of laps this year, beating, and nobody's ever led so many laps. So he was, it was wonderful. He won the championship. Without that brake disc breaking on someone else's car, he might have finished fourth and tricks would have been yeah, the champion. So it was Incredible. drama till the very end, but it, it was drama. And that's what I think I love about NASCAR. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Well, that's why we love motor, motorsport, motor racing, really. Um, drama and two wheels. Another yeah, one. I mean, the best race of the year was probably the Moto3, but um, MotoGP was a, a bit processional for, uh, for MotoGPs, but just watching a you know, MotoGP bike going around that uh, the Portugal circuit. Um, what's the name of it? Portimao. You know, um, Portimao. Portimao. Yeah. I mean, just, just to see one man. That, that's what I go back to Formula One, why I love Formula One in the 60s and 70s. I mean, the races were so processional sometimes. I mean, people here would say, oh, they didn't race in your day. No, they didn't. But one car going through a corner on its own with Jim Clark visibly, I could see his hands, his head, you know, drifting his car, was exciting. Whereas Lewis going through a mild understeer with a little top of his helmet isn't exciting, you know, because he goes around on rails, the car's not out of shape. But you see these bike riders manhandling these machines around places like Porto Mount, yeah, going to the dippers. And, oh. So although it wasn't that much overtake, he was just, and this Bagnaia, Fabio, not, not, he's not a Fabio, is he? I've got his wrong name wrong. No, uh, Francesco Bagnaia had another win for Ducati. He's, he was the 2018, I think, um, Moto2 champion. He's had two steady years with Ducati. And now Ducati, a really good bike. And he was the only one that could have caught um, Fabio before he fell last round. Until the forty, Fabio fell off. He was he was struggling to stay with the pace of the Ducatis, and probably his mind's not winning anymore. And he fell off at his first mistake of the year. But it was uh, yeah, Bagnaia must be a, a favourite for next year. Moto two, that was a good battle in Moto two because Remy Garda, uh, Ralph Fernandez is the only one that could get Remy Garda's uh, championship away from him, the Australian. Um, but eventually, Remy came to the win, another win, and he's now he's only got to finish about second or not second, two points, about thirteenth or fourteenth uh, in the last round at Valencia this coming weekend. So it looks like Remy Gardner will be the uh, champion in, in Moto Two. But Moto Three was settled in just it was the first race of Sunday morning to watch, <laughs> and it was just the best the amount of racing. Hey, we're going backwards and forwards. It wasn't a big slipstream because they got the one big, big straight there, but the overtaking manoeuvres at every corner and Pedro Costa, this 16 was leading the championship by 20 points or so. Uh, he only qualified 15th having been quick all weekend, but he came through as he does and got to the lead and Dennis Foggia, the only guy that could beat him for the championship, was leading most of it and quicker bike on the straights and the, it was building up on the last lap that on the corner I think it's called a turn three but it's the first tight hairpin uh Costa dive bomb Foggia to take the lead and he won the race he would be the champion but still you know Foggia may well have come back but unfortunately um what was his name the South African I always forget his name came Darren Binder came from about fifth to just clatter Foggia and just took him out and then the Italians are all in tears they destroyed Foggia's chance with the championship we had a bit of NASCAR afterwards in the in the thing because Binder oh, came down that. to the garage to try to apologise. The Italians were all waving their fingers and get out. Then Foggia came to have a bit of a go, I think, and uh, it was an see, awful move by Binder. Binder, see, you know, see, I've been when there. you're not in the championship. Uh, yeah, I've been there, not in the championship, and nothing anywhere near as uh, crucial. And I was in the right, but but when you go to apologise, because you feel, so, I can imagine how he felt and feels terrible. And then, no, 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 we don't want any of it. So uh, it's, it's awful because he's our trying Brits, to do the our right three, thing. Our three MotoGP Brits had mixed fortunes. It was a good third place for Sam Lowe's. He, he, was on the, he won the last round after winning the first two and having a terrible mid-season. Uh, so Sam Lowe's came third. A bit distance from the front two, but he finished a good third. But Jake Dixon was qualified well down and was on his off again. One of the many to crash. So Jake's not had a good end of the year. John McPhee are only of these three MotoGP riders Britain has. Moto3 for McPhee. Qualified second, he was one of many Moto3s to drop the front end and crashed out. So 
poor old John's had a bad season. Ended up a bit too much time on the on his bottom and not on the track. And not always his fault, of course. But that's fun with Moto three. You get taken out. You can be the innocent party. Uh, but anyway, so Costa finished the lap, won the race, tears everywhere and thrown in the air, and little Spanish kid. And it, it was magic. So is he the youngest ever winner, champion? No, he was beaten by the second youngest rookie. I forgot the name of the one of Simon, not a Celli, one of the Celli, Simon Celli, you know, maybe I don't know which okay. one. But it was still, the youngest, still, second youngest ever rookie to win the a It's funny this yeah. season because he started off this just winning everything and then he sort of peaked yeah. out. And uh, yeah. he sort of he's got it back again, but absolutely brilliant. As Valentino, as Valentino Rossi retires, Pedro yeah. Costa arrives. And I think yeah. Acosta is to many people, the, you know, the, the the prince that's going to inherit the, the Rossi crowd in about five or six or seven years' time. Well, he's already kind of got the uh, the first win, hasn't he? Which is which is great. So a long way to go to get to where Rossi yeah. uh, was. But his character's great. It's funny how Spanish kids and Italian kids, to me, sound they speak English almost the same. He was always a bit of Rossi, the way he's talking. Uh, and yet, Italian, and yet, they're still with a passion no, no, out No, but the, the Spanish seem very similar. Whereas Spanish <laughs> itself and Italy, to me, are completely different sounding languages. And yet yeah. when they can speak English, they both seem to speak English in a very similar way. Not quite as good as the Italians. They don't, they don't do the finger waving and the hands as much as the Italians. But, but Costa's interviews, you know, he, he, I can see he's going to be a great character. And that's because the thing about Rossi. It's not just his speed You're on the right. track. I mean, it's the You're... personality, the charm, right. you know. And if Pedro can develop a bit more of that, you know, he will be a future But, it, but I feel star. sorry for these people, uh, these these sportsmen, these young guys, because they're so they're, they're in the spotlight, they're, and they're thrust into the media, and they've got to be so professional. They've got, they, they've got to be so careful about what they say until you get to a, yeah. certain, a certain stage where it doesn't matter and... and that you're still going to be signed by the team, but until you're until you get to that status, you've got to be squeaky clean. And it's a shame. So you don't see those little personalities come through. So I hope Pedro Costa keeps his uh, going. Next week we've already mentioned Formula One. You got anything else to mention from last weekend too? Yeah, just one. The last MotoGP was, was just all we're looking for is for um, uh, Remy Gardner to to get two points, finish thirteenth, and take the title. There's one title to be to be held. Um, and it's, uh, Valencia's a terrible track to watch. You never know which part of the two. One of those ones that turns and turns and turns. And if you, if you walked into a room half around a lap, you wouldn't be able to say which corner they were going through. It's, it's a dull looking place, not the best track, especially to end the championship. Whereas Brazil for the Formula One cars is one of my favorite <laughs> tracks to watch. An old fashioned track with the barriers nearby and dips and hollows and some fantastic corners. Um, that wonderful charge up the hill, you know, where we saw Lando holding off Lewis, didn't we, a year ago, on that final run to the flag. And, of course, you know, poor Alex Albon get punted out. So much drama happens there. Well, Red Bull so, are um, hot favourites with the, the lay of the land with, the, with regards to the track this weekend. So yeah. another win for Max, second place for Lewis. It's amazing, the second drivers, isn't it? Val, Valtteri and, uh, of course, Perez had a good uh, third place, but still so far off their number one drivers. Yeah, but you know, if they can get that qualifying again, I'm still, still, you know, yeah. it's not a must win yet. I, saw, I already tweeted at least the press, Lewis, must win. It's only a must win when you're going to lose on points. So, can I um, ask you one further thing on Formula One that I didn't ask you at the beginning? Uh, the, was it any controversy or did Mercedes just do the right thing and, and get Valtteri in again? to do new tyres for the fastest lap. Oh, yeah, they had to get the fastest lap, steal a point. Yeah, had to steal a point. I don't like those fastest laps. I mean, they're, they're always trying to add gimmicks that I think often backfire, you know, it's just it's sort of stupid stuff. Because you know, the fastest lap because you stop for a new set of tyres, you know. You shouldn't be allowed to stop within fast. the last 10 laps or something for new tyres. I know, something like that, yeah. yeah. It should be the fastest lap in the race when you're properly racing, but yeah. you can't write a rule. Well, just, you, to can't, do that. You, you can't get the fastest lap if you stop within the last... I have been talking about that. We've got a sprint race, haven't we, in Brazil? Oh, there is, yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. I think it well, is, there isn't is. it? So, yeah. be... you, I saw that they had that big survey for motorsport. And it, it seems a bit 50-50, but, I, you know, we're going to get more sprint races, whether you like it or not. I like it, I think. But only the Friday poll, the guy that gets pole for the sprint race should go down in the history books as the pole position lap time not the winner of the sprint race, in yep. my opinion. Change, change that. Because pole position is always the fastest guy on low fuel, free tyres. You know, it's the, the ultimate accolade. It's been yep. the fastest when, the, when the, you, know, you all have a go. Not the winner of a sprint race, which could be gifted to you by two other people crashing in front of you. 
But yeah, we've got a sprint race. I like it because then Friday has a highlight qualifying. Saturday has a highlight sprint race. Sunday is a race. I'm, I'm for sprint races. Even yeah. though you see people think I'm a traditionalist that I don't want to change anything. I'm happy with sprint races. No, you don't get called traditionalist. You get called old, boring dinosaurs. Yeah, di- yeah, all right, okay. Yeah, all right, all right. So the opposite of a sprint race this weekend, your boring dinosaur, uh, 12 hour race of the remembrance. Come on! Are you up there? Yeah. Oh, I forgot. It's this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in team so, paddle up, and and our man from paddle up, Joe, uh, who I race with, uh, uh, who you know very well, he's so happy because it looks like there's not going to be any rain. So he is so happy because um, Joe. Whose car are you using? We're using a Caterham car, so we've got a Caterham Works entry car. So there's no excuse. What tyres? Which like you have Academy, you have the, the, no, the club got, sports. So which so we got so you got academy, which is what we did last year. Then up yeah. from there, you have road sport, um, which is the yeah. same horsepower, but you get an extra anti roll bar at the back and better tires. But we're going full two seventy, so in the fastest possible group, which means we get an extra ten horsepower. We get a wider track suspension, front and rear anti roll bar, and the sticky, and the sticky tires as well. So God, your neck will be good. You get G force. You get G forces. <laughs> all that extra grip. Or will, will your neck be? Oh, you better get some exercises. What, so what's what, it like a bit wet? Aren't they on a semi race tire? Which if it rains, yeah, are pretty they, horrible. They are. I've actually got them on the academy car now, and, and I haven't I haven't been out of the wet. I haven't braided the wet yet. But apparently they are pretty <laughs> pretty horrid. So that's why Joe is delighted because Joe's. <laughs> you know I love Joe. He's a brilliant driver, but he's had a couple of mysterious spins, and he said, "Oh." I'm so angry, somebody's tapped me in that corner. And, and oh, okay, Joe, who was that then? And then he looks at his footage and there's no one. <laughs> Nobody over near. 200 meters. <laughs> so he's quite. So, how many drivers do you have then for this? We've got four drivers. So, we've got someone from uh, Mission Motorsport, one of their drivers, uh, Danny Holland, who's quick, apparently. Yeah. Um, so, looking forward to having Danny. Uh, we've got Fred Chiddicks, who just missed by one point. Oh, Fred, oh Fred's for you. Okay. So Fred's oh, team, strong then. team then. Yeah, strong we got, team. We've got, we got a good team. You need a bit of luck. And then we got got um, uh, Dan from Caterham who's coming up and he's our support man on the on the tools. So And he's very, very good as yeah, well. Yeah, forget Cater Ham. What about Catering? <laughs> who's feeding you? <laughs> yeah. Who's looking, Who's massaging you? Who, yeah. how, how's the race? It's not a non-stop 24 hours. Is it a 12 and a 12 or something? Or is it a 9 and no, a 9? No, sorry. It's 12, 12 hours total and they do um, they do half on the Saturday going through to sort of uh, 5 o'clock to about 9 o'clock on Saturday evening. So you get some night and day. And then Sunday, they restart it. And then they stop it for Remembrance Sunday. So we, we all line up. 11. And then, and then the, the conclusion is sort of another couple of hours racing. So, so sort of six, six hours, three hours, three hours. Yeah, exactly. Sort so, of. So, so it should, oh, should a be piece, a piece of cake, really. Piece <laughs> yeah, of cake. Pe- well, it is a piece of cake because we've got four drivers over two days. So it should be a piece of cake, really. But I I look forward to reporting back on Monday. Who knows? Who I knows? shall go to TSL Timing <laughs> Solutions and I shall be checking the lap times. I hope it's on TSL. Yeah, it is. And, um, it is. TSL are brilliant, aren't they? For those they're brilliant, who don't fantastic. Know about motorsport, the TSL you just lifetime from any sort of all the results going on. Absolutely brilliant. Good, good, good for them. So it's a BRS. Well, good luck, event. Paul. Thank well you. done for doing it. Very impressed. Well, it's Mission have, Motorsport Race of Remembrance. It's a fun. brilliant. Well, exactly. Course, so thank you, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Tiff, and. Uh, uh, well done for the Saints this weekend as well. They're, they're marching home. Yeah, Saints. See you next week. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Bye.